I want you to try something with me, okay? Close your eyes and pay careful attention to the sounds around you. Maybe you hear birds singing in the trees. Maybe you hear leaves rustling in the wind. Maybe you hear the sound of rain. Or maybe you hear traffic. You can open your eyes. In isolation, these are just sounds. But ultimately, this, this is the music of life. We have the high notes from the birds down to the very low sounds of the humming of traffic. And personally, I believe that I would, I can't imagine a life without music. And for me, music has been a way of communication and it's been the case throughout history. Music has been how people cry out for help. Through music, people have expressed joy, they've expressed love. And ultimately, through music, we get to communicate with God. And for the last few years, I've become very intrigued around this somewhat simple concept of music, but more so how music connects us to God. And so, I went searching for answers. I already had deep love for music. But one thing I can say is, when I joined the group, my love for music grew much bigger. Made me appreciate music more. You know, it's not about the notes. It's not about how fancy you can sing. It's the words that matter the most. You know, joining this group, thanks to our writer, expressing the words in our song, especially, especially on the day. It hit me every time I'd sing. It helped. It helped me work on my faith with God. I had doubts. I had questions for Him. You know, difficult times can leave us feeling exposed and unprotected. But I had to put my faith, I had to put my trust in Him. And I'm here today. It's all thanks to Him, and it's all thanks to the love of music. Epiphany to start off. Epiphany, the 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 how can I uh, The meaning of epiphany is uh, a sudden revelation or a divine experience. So our name came about an act. So our group was I wouldn't say practicing but jamming with music, and all of a sudden the, the pastor liked the music and just said, "Okay, you're gonna sing." And we thought he was playing around, but apparently he wasn't good because he called us up in front without actually practicing any song. Uh, only four people went up. And I, as, as you, you will see, there's, there's six of us. But only four people went up that day because uh, two of us chickened out. Um, then, then, <laughs> then the following morning, he called us again. Luckily, we were prepared. We were prepared because... We saw that if he can say he will call us up and you think you think he's joking, he actually do it like for real. Then we okay, we thought, okay, best to prepare. Uh he called us up. Then after that it became a thing that every single day we were singing a song and then to prepare a song. Then it's it's the reaction that how people reacted to towards us. They they, they felt blessed. So uh that's how the name came about. It, it started as something that was just playing around. But the, the consequences of us just starting to sing became a divine experience to other people who were at camp. So it was a sudden revelation. And a divine experience. And a divine experience. <laughs> um, firstly, the main, the, main, the main aim of this is, is for us to, to grow our faith in Christ, to grow spiritually, mentally, and grow our relationship with God. And in terms of what we want to achieve throughout the world, we want to spread the message to everyone. Like Njobakshio AY, the Advent message to all the world in my generation. So to us, this is the Advent message to our generation. Some of the challenges we face is finding days to practice because we have, we have, we have trouble with organizing money to go and practice in a certain place because we are situa situated 
in different places. So it's very hard for us to meet up. So some of us are school, some of us work, you know. So it's very hard for us to find days to practice. But also, we find it very hard to select a song to choose because there's summer school, there's divine service, you know. So we have to select a song when we want to sing. I buy anyone from Tolele. So, you know, school is, is it's a lot. Amongst others is, um, you know, when you are like visiting a space that you're not familiar with, and then there's like certain boundaries that we like face when it comes to the ability to minister. Because you find that as youngsters, like a majority of us are not baptized. So one of the things that usually become like a hindrance of some nature is during divine service at times. Like many, most of our peak performances are during divine services because that's when we actually get to connect to God most, knowing that we're bringing everyone else up with us, you know. But yeah, it's amongst other issues. Logistics, yeah, you name them, common stuff. As the songwriter, the primary songwriter, I get a lot of revelations, you know, and every song has a background or it has a story to tell. So, for example, like if I could give you a backstory, a short one about one of the songs that are very dear to our hearts, I was literally reflecting on everything that happened, I think in the year 2022. And so all of that just amounted to something that I put down on a piece of paper and multi tracked And that was the beginning of everything. Comes along with many other songs as well. Some others you're going to hear. But every story or every song that you hear has its own story. So yeah, I do get revelations. Sometimes in the form of a melody and just, you know, God just does the work with the lyrics. I, I don't even know how that happens. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, actually, the song titled Walking Cleaner, um, it tells us about having faith in God, in all the obstacles that we face in life, and in everything that the hardships that we face every day, every year. It tells us to believe and have faith, strong faith in God. In I think earlier we were chatting and I said to you that uh, I come from a family that sings. My dad sang in a group, my mum sang in a group, they sang with choirs. And so, yes, I sang as a child, but it wasn't a thing. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, she can sing, let's give her a mic, kind of thing, you know. Um, so, yes, I only actually started singing in church when I was like 24 years old. That was the first time I ever sang a solo item. Uh, before that I had sang with school choirs and so on, I was in a group, never on my own. And so yeah, only at the age of 24 did I do a special item for the first time and it was random because my auntie was visiting from the Western Cape and a friend of ours was with us and she said, okay, tomorrow you guys are singing in church, here's the track, go learn the song. And I agreed to it and we ended up singing and I guess that's where the journey started for me as a solo singer. So I started singing as a young adult, age 24, um, just started out and I did receive criticism but I appreciated it because it was feedback more than anything and I, I suppose it sort of made me question also my why, like why I was doing it because I just sang because my auntie said, oh, you guys are going to sing in church and you should do it. You can hold the note, you should do it. So there wasn't really a, a why at that stage. And so it did also make me just sit down and, and evaluate like why I was doing it. And if I'm going to do it, I should do it properly. And so 
I decided as, as an adult to go for vocal lessons. So I got married and then three years later had my first child. I was pregnant with my first child when I finally decided, no, I should go for vocal lessons. So I registered or enrolled with the Vocal Academy of Pretoria for about a year and a half. And because I felt like if, if you're going to sing, which is a ministry, then what's the point if people can't hear the message? Because I found that with listening to other people as well, I was like, what a beautiful song and what a powerful song, but I couldn't hear the words. And if I'm struggling to hear the words, maybe other people are also struggling to hear the words. And then, you know, it, it, what's the point? You should be able to get the message across clearly. And so th that moved me to do that. And I'm glad I did because now when I stand up, it's also another reminder, you know, this is a message. This is a testimony. This is worshiping God. This is edifying people. And yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the criticism because <laughs> it led me down that path, you know, to to try and improve and to understand what it's about and to do it properly, you know. I get nervous every time uh, I stand up there, my hands shake, my mouth dries up, I start perspiring, um, I get very nervous but, and, and you'll, maybe next time you hear me sing, just keep an eye out for it because people don't notice it, they say you look so confident, but I'm not and whilst I'm standing there, I am praying. I pray before I go on and as I'm standing there I'm praying and I'm asking God to calm my nerves and to get the message across and that people will be encouraged and so no I get nervous every time I've been singing for a couple of years now it does not go away never never but I did hear something that I really really liked I don't know if you can remember the mass choir that sang at uh, Durban City Hall a couple of years back and the choir leader or the conductor we had a practice the Sabbath morning and he spoke and he guided us through the, the practice session. And at the end, he said, you need to have a righteous confidence. And that stuck with me because it's not confidence like the world knows it. Like, oh, look at me and oh, I sang so well. You know, it's God is with me. That kind of confidence. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That kind of confidence. And if, if I were to encourage anybody who is also nervous to do anything, I would say have a righteous confidence. One of the earlier experiences I can remember is an auntie in our church, Auntie Evie. She was a brilliant soprano. And I remember when we would go to church, like her voice, she had like a built-in mic into her voice. And when I would hear her sing, I was just like, oh, my mouth would be open. And I was just moved, you know, the way she sang. And it inspired me to learn the hymns because at that stage I think I was probably six or seven and I was like starting to to read and I made sure I had my hymn book because I wanted to follow the words and I wanted to be able to to sing as well um, and then of course my dad had an LP player and he had the, the LP record stacked in my brother and I would sit and we'd listen to to the LPs the crackling and I guess uh, there was always music around you know, um, my cousin Enslin backs and he plays the piano and whenever we would gather as the family, like the extended family, our cousins, you know, uh, grandparents, aunties, uncles, we'd spend Sabbath lunch together and then when the sun sets, everybody is singing from the littlest one to the oldest one and we recently had an opportunity to do that. Of course, our grandparents are late so they weren't part of the experience but my kids were. And I just, I actually get goosebumps just remembering it because it's so special, you know, having the kids appreciating the music as well. And they get asked their favorite songs and we get to sing their favorite songs and everybody says, okay, I want to sing this one. And, and we just all sing together. It's, it's such an amazing experience to share with my kids. Um, in fact, when I brought Joshua home from the hospital, my eldest, he's 12 now. That first day he was at home, I actually had worship with him. I mean, he was like two days, three days old, but I actually had worship with him. I sat down with him and I had a little book and there was one song that I used to sing whilst he was still in my belly. Uh, it's called Jesus Lord to me. And I sang it whilst he was in my belly and obviously now for the first worship. 
And I promise you, till this day, when we sit down for worship and we sing that specific song, you just see like shoulders relax and it just does something and it just says something about how powerful music is because they hear that, they remember it and it's soothing and it feels like a safe space, you know, and yeah, I find that it, it also helps to help them remember, you know, who God is and helps them understand the Bible a bit more when they hear these choruses, you know. So yes, it definitely forms part of our experience now and I absolutely love sharing that with them um, and they've, they've taken it on themselves as well. My parents went to GC, I think I shared it on Humans of Adventism. They went to GC and they were in the train station, you know, about to make their journey back to the hotel with a whole lot of other Adventist people and whilst they were waiting for the train someone just randomly started singing a hymn and then the entire train station burst into singing and my father and them were explaining to me you know it was a whole lot of different cultures everybody looked different not one single person looked the same and yet they all knew the hymns and they were all singing together one voice and he says they continued hymn after hymn and then just before the, the train arrived, there was one hymn in particular, We Have This Hope. And he says, people were crying, obviously, and, and you can see I've got goosebumps as well, because when they came back and they were sharing their experiences with us, um, we were in awe. But for me, that one stood out, because I can only imagine what heaven will be like. Can you just imagine us all together, finally with our Saviour, and we are singing together, the singing will never end. It will be like in that train station, hymn after hymn, you know, and it will just flow into each other and we'll, we'll be praising God forever. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably a favorite experience because it also um, reminds you of what we can look forward to, you know. I definitely believe that worship, uh, well, music forms part of your worship experience. Um, just as much as prayer, just as much as reading your Bible. Um, I think it definitely can uplift the soul. It can give you hope. It can encourage. Um, your heart can be moved with joy. And, and that's my experience um, when I listen to music, whether it's in church, whether it's you know at home, in the car, wherever I am. Music inspires, music guides. And that's, of course, through... God's Spirit. Um, it's Him that is guiding us through that experience and music is definitely part of our worship experience both as a family and for me as an individual and many times when I sing <clears throat> afterwards people will come up to me and they'll say you know you know what I was I was supposed to hear that message and I'm reminded each time that it's not about me that it is definitely a message and it reaches people um, sometimes in a way that a sermon maybe can't, you know. Um, I was singing at one competition for a radio council. It was called a Christian radio station. I made it to the top ten and I sang that evening and the, the song was I Will Pray For You. And I went to the bathroom during the break and a, a woman who had cancer came up to me and she was in tears and she said to me, I needed to hear that someone is praying for me. It's, it's the encouragement that I needed. And so every time I hear that, and even from my own experience, it confirms for me that, you know, yes, music is definitely a part of worship. We're going to worship like that in heaven. And so I feel it's in, an integral part of our worship experience, whether privately or as a congregation. Definitely forms part of our our experience. I heard a song recently sung by Fountain View Academy and my husband was playing it because he usually picks the, the music. He's the DJ on a Friday evening and he chooses the, the music that we listen to and the song was playing. It's Behold Our God and the song basically asks several questions like who has hold who has held the ocean in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? And there's only one answer. And it says, behold, our God, seated on his throne. 
Um, come let us adore him. Behold our king. Nothing can compare. Come let us adore him. And that's how typically I choose my songs that I sing is that it speaks to me first. Um, I am moved by the song and then I find myself saying I have to sing the song and so immediately Friday evening because the song was now in my head and the words and I'm like I have to sing this and so I started looking for a track and I sang it the very next day and that's that's typically how it goes or somebody will send me a song and say I think you need to listen to this and I think you need to sing it and there have been very few times where they are wrong because I think maybe they know me well I will listen to it and then I have to sing it I have to sing it and it's mainly because of the message in the song and it's speaking to me well God speaking to me first and then I have to share that like a testimony you know I've got two boys and they're busy and they mama this mama that and so the only time I can be alone is when they are still asleep and I go out in the garden and everything's quiet and then I do very quietly considering the neighbors and I start to sing but you'll find me singing throughout the house when I'm washing dishes, <laughs> wherever I am, I'll be, I'll be singing whatever's on my heart. Who has held the ocean in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his voice. All creation rises to Now you know what's been on my heart. <laughs>created music before we were even created and we know of this because he basically gifted music to his highest ranking angel that's Lucifer Ezekiel 28 verse 13 tells us how God basically created the workmanship of his timbrels his pipes essentially the instrument of music and gifted it to Lucifer at his creation so through that we see that God really does love music but the thing is now, we kind of have forgotten the importance of music and we don't really appreciate music the same way God does. So us listening to music that doesn't really uplift God or it doesn't really connect us to God or not singing in church or wherever we are with all our heart, with all our passion, shows that we don't really understand just how much God loves music. and drama really became my escape. Um, it was the place where I was, I could shut everything off and it was just me and God. From around eight years old, <clears throat> um, I was writing notes about killing myself and like I was that upset about life. Um, why you, you can't even tell who, who is so depressed at the age of eight you know um, I had like a secret diary where I used to write in invisible ink like that's how serious I was with this business so I've been seeing like psychologists from a year like a really young age um, started taking medication 
um, also because I also have scoliosis, which is basically curvature of the spine. So they really felt that I needed more assistance just because I'm dealing with both quite a difficult um, physical illness because I had to wear like this Boston brace and it's basically like a cast but for your whole upper body so having that I had a lot of people teasing me at school um, another thing was sense of identity because my dad is uh, black and my mom is colored so whenever I would go home I, well to Limpopo I never fit in there when I was here at school um, I was bullied because my Zulu wasn't up to scratch. I was not colored enough. I was not black enough. So I was never, so that was another problem. Like, who am I? You know, struggling with identity. There's so many factors that can affect someone's mental health. And I feel like we really underplay that. Every single person's well-being, how they are emotionally from day to day, how they are able to cope with situations, how they're able to interact with people, inter um, interpersonal relationships, uh, relationships, emotional regulation, things like that. We, we don't look at those things, so we often don't get the help. So because of that, I, the people that do have mental illnesses seem crazy because everyone else is not looking at their mental health. I don't have an issue, you know. Um, so it being, I, I was even on a wheelchair at some point, and I was adamant about going to school, which was not a wheelchair-friendly school. Um, so everyone's looking at you, everyone knows. Um, it's not that I was embarrassed, I, I wasn't. Um, but you don't want people pitying you. You don't, you don't want that pity. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it, it got to me that everyone's looking and saying, oh, poor Kirsten, you know, saying, oh, shame, you know. And it's also as I've been growing up even more and more, like um, grade 10, 11, 12, it was always a thing of Kirsten's so brave. Kirsten is, yo, she's gone through so much. She's amazing for this and for that. And I wasn't feeling good about myself. I really, I really, I was upset every day. I was having... Um, anxiety attacks I was you know breaking down and everything and yet I'm told oh Kirsten's this amazing person because you know she was paralyzed now she's walking and she got distinctions at school and she got colors and she got this and that that's not how I felt you know that's really not how I felt I don't I hated that the reason why I was seen as successful was because I overcame those things. I, I don't even feel like I have the strength to overcome those things. It could have only been God, literally. Um, I don't think any person has that much strength to overcome so much. Then we got to university. It just got worse um, because at least in high school, it was like a very balanced school with um, regards to like race groups, cultures and stuff like that. Then you go to UKZM and if you are somebody that looks black and you're not speaking Zulu, you can have a big issue. You can have a big issue there. I was doing drama and psychology as my majors and they chose to use Zulu as the main medium of actually doing our practicals, things like that. So it was really hectic because now they would not include me on purpose because they wouldn't even give me the chance to at least try, you know, because I can speak. It's just I don't speak it well, you know. Um, so I came from a school where obviously they had to do English because it's all different races. Now it's Zulu. And now I'm like the one thing which was drama, the one thing that made me feel alive, that made me feel, feel like I mattered that I was talented, that I was bringing something to, to somebody, was taken away from me. So now I'm like, what do I have left? I think one of the, <laughs> the memories that I have in my mind was at our church, we had like these little four mics and um, 
there were like the four of us, all little girls. We were like six, seven, singing there. I was so serious, guys. I was serious about this thing. And then you have Pilo who's busy laughing, somebody there. I was like, I was not impressed. I'm like, guys, we're not taking this thing seriously. <laughs> I'm here to be singing in front of the church. We're not taking this seriously, guys, please. But um, it was, I think, the reason why music was so important for me was the church that I was in. Um, things like that where we were, okay, we were given the opportunity to um, sing and also um, where we had things like children's ministries, adventurers, pathfinders, where we were not only, you know, just doing our tasks, but also singing, using that as a form of communication. Um, so that for me, it wasn't, it wasn't at a young age, the hymns. It was the, oh, when you tell a child, you tell the world. When you tell a child, you tell the world. Those beautiful songs that, you know, um, really instill in a child something when they are young. Um, it's really something that stays with them. Um, so yeah, it all started out there and then um, I got to the point where I could sing in front of the church on my own, singing solos, then it was song service for me, that, that, was, that was the place guys, like song service was the harmonies, oh guys, that's the beauty of music, even if I didn't understand languages, I hear harmonies and I hear people that are praising God and I'm like, that's enough. They speak about in heaven how they speak different voices, they sing different voices and Lucifer was able to sing all the different voices, you know? So it is so important. Actually, the thing of harmonies is actually such a big thing, just harmonies alone. Um, so that for me was, okay, I want to learn this harmony and that harmony. And so I went on doing that. Um, and then after that, it was, as I said, about songwriting. Um, a lot of the times when I was in hospital and we weren't actually doing anything, I would be mainly in my room and actually writing songs. Um, so the one day um, I was actually writing and um, there was this one that I would like to read for you, um, which says, Every day I struggle against the devil. With each new breath, I cannot comprehend. While life tends to get me down, I cannot stop my frown. I feel hopeless, oh so helpless. Set me free, make me complete. From every trial, make me smile so genuinely. I don't want to cry, I don't want to fight this battle on my, on my own. So set me free, Lord, make me complete. I cannot understand just why you love me. Unworthy is the way I see myself. So, I will, so alone these trials I face without accepting grace from my Father, O oh my Savior. Set me free, make me complete. From every trial, make me smile so genuinely. I don't want to cry. I don't want to fight this battle on my own. So set me free, Lord, make me complete. So um, this was one of the songs that I'd written when I was in the hospital. Um, often once I've written the songs, I'm quite a perfectionist. So I'll go back to them and it's changed. The song has changed a lot. Um, but I wanted to read to you what I was actually writing um, in the psychiatric hospital to just show you the emotions that I was feeling and still the connection that I was able to feel with God even in those times of feeling so down, feeling so alone. Um, it's just like when David cried out to God, you know, God, where are you? Um, you know, I don't see you anywhere, anywhere. My enemies are after me. You know, God doesn't just want you to be speaking to him or praising him he wants he wants to hear your troubles he wants to hear your trials he wants to hear what troubles you so that he can be there for you 
Um, I was always singing, you know, songs in church, singing solos, singing with the group, singing in song service. But I wanted to do more. Um, so I decided to start a YouTube channel. At the beginning, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. Um, I just knew that I wanted a space where I was reaching more people, not the same people that I usually reach. Um, so it's become a space for a lot of things. It's become a space where I talk about um, things about mental illnesses. Um, I've spoken about issues with women. Um, I've spoken about um, even just things like, um, not speaking per se, but also singing. Um, the songs that I choose are always songs that have a specific message. I don't like to like go there and be like, oh guys, I'm gonna do a Beyonce song, just so you can see my ability. That's, that's the one thing um, that I always wanna highlight about gospel music. Um, there's a very thin line between performative singing and worship. And we often, we often go over that line, you know, and it is so important that we remember why we are singing. Um, because often you, you get, it's, and it, it, gets, it gets to me actually sometimes, where I get scared, I go to a venue and I'm like, oh my, this is a different type of people, so I have to sing a different type of song and this, that and the other, when it's actually like, no, God has this message for me today, this is what he wants me to do. Um, so on my YouTube channel, it wasn't really a space where I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do big songs or whatever. It was just, okay, I'm here with a message. Be it, you know, not always um, per se like gospel, um, but just a message that helps somebody. Um, so on my YouTube channel, I started off with songs that are like well-known, you know, um, songs that other people sing. And then, um, I was like, you know what, I want to do more. And I started um, actually singing with like my own songs and putting my own songs on there. Um, <laughs> the, the takes, guys, I'm a perfectionist. So my brother would stand there. And if I made one mistake, I said one wrong word in the song, we'd have to go again and again and again and again. Um, so my brother is quite tired of me singing uh, <laughs> but um, it's a lovely experience so I also just want to encourage anyone who wants to actually encourage others um, to use that space use YouTube or whatever pu um, public platform you, you can use because in this day and age technology is the new big thing we don't find out about people from going to theaters or whatever it's actually from social media, you know? So I figured there's a nice space. And it's not about how many followers you have. It's not about how many subscribers you have. Yes, it's great to reach more people. We do want that. But it is about making sure that there is a message so that even five years later, someone can come back to that YouTube video and be blessed. Um, so I decided at first I was just doing normal. I would sing with my speaker um, and sing songs. And then I was like, you know what? Let's, you know, take it up a notch. And um, I bought a mic, uh, just a USB mic um, and had my system, little system going on in my room. And then I started actually recording the vocals on the laptop and then um, being able to layer, getting all those harmonies in. Um, so it's really like a lot of fun that you can have with it. So um, yeah, join me as we go into the little Lorella studio. No longer safe with those who say that they love you. But God's the one trust with the secrets of your heart with open arms he will embrace you and open your eyes to a brighter tomorrow to a glimmer of hope in a world that's filled with sorrow someone show us how to call Yes. 
if we believe in his infinite love, he will yearn you us until we are one. If we believe in his infinite love, he will unite us until we are one. pressure that comes with um, being in a group that is so popular and also I felt like people have certain ex um, expectations from the group because I mean it's in tune yeah, well, so I try and think Google to know this is not about me it's about God and the mission and what he um, expects from us to do and you know to preach and let his people know about his second coming and also on Jay people know the good news that God um, wants us to portray to other people. Yeah. Um, music um, actually has helped me a lot. Um, firstly, with calmness and having some peace, because whenever maybe I have a problem or stressed, I just listen to music and I just feel so calm and peaceful. And yeah, so music helps me just to just to stay calm and relaxed, yeah. For one, I'm someone who like started singing at a very young age. Um, so becoming an SDA two years ago, um, my local church like acknowledged my, my, my talent or my gift and they tried to use it here and there. But when I moved to Durban for school and then I found this group, like it was, yeah. I can say it was a dream come true, hey? It was a dream come true, and um, we travel a lot. So that's nice, you know, going to like different places, and you know it's not for wrong reasons, but you're going there to like worship the Lord. So it's really been a great experience. And I've always heard our director say that um, it, it being, in, being in, in tune have saved him from a lot of things. Because uh, in, in weekends we'd be in church, it's either they're going to sing, Sunday is the at rehearsals, so it saves us from a lot of things. Satan is busy trying to, you know, make sure that we do not see heaven, make sure that we fall at some point, you know. So um, the structures, God, God has played a huge role, because at times we've, 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 we as the youngsters as well we have needed some assistance, you know, from the, from, from the seniors, because we, we, come through challenges we are still a new group uh, there's going to be the clash of personalities but where we, we where we are falling we just call our director hey come and help us we've we've hit this stumbling block and then he will, he will come growing up um we had this type of mindset no matter this type of music that we we're listening to while growing up you know so you go to church and you, along the way you sing in Gaida, I want to be ready and all these other songs, you know. And then when you get to church, you know, um, you know, you left a car with this type of music. But then when you get to church, you know, there's that African texture that's there, you know. So um, you understand that, you know, there's something different about our music and, you know. So then um, as a group, we decided, you know, you know what, let's just do us. Let's do the original music that we grew up knowing, 
you know and obviously we 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 did have to think about spicing it up to meet you know um the the standards you know that are already there you know so um but we 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 just decided to remain you know basic with our style of music and what influences our music is that you know um sometimes um it's not about what we see what we observe um from other people but it's also about our experiences that we go through you know so um what we go through on a daily date basis is more of like what we reflect on what we sing you know each and every day that we go through you know especially as you know young people that we are you know we fall victim to a lot of things you know so that literally plays a role in how we create our music you know we decide to tell a story you know based on our experiences individually not with the, as a group or okay, collectively sure but as a group um we decided to you know what let's use our experiences to tell our story as in tune junior so that's what makes us a bit more specific in a way like there is one song from the group which is bambi sandla like that song has a special meaning as you can hear it says bambi sandla like god will just hold your hand throughout anything that you face in life so yeah and that is why i just say it's this song yeah your music has helped me a lot because um as i said i got into the church like 2 years back so where i was i was doing music for the world you know and then coming here having to like include like scripture in like all the songs that you do you do not only get a chance to like sing for people but you get a chance to like communicate with god because like we have um the song called lord do you smile and it asks us uh, like about the lord's emotion like does he ever like you know play around and stuff like that so i was like oh okay so now we are we're communing with god but it's in a musical sense you know so yeah i think it it, it changed my perspective like for like music and all that yeah this name carries so much weight but in all of that we pray that god uh, helps us carry it because at the end of the day we need to carry it, it, it it's much more easier ministering with a well known uh, name or being in a big group it, it's because you can reach uh, some places that you cannot reach physically even in, in even online someone who will see in tune okay i know these guys so why let me listen to them you know not saying that the new groups they they, they do not get a chance of being listened to but uh, being in in tune makes it more easier to minister you know yeah yo um for me music is my dose like daily dose because i start singing from a very young age like in I sang with my parents from I can't remember but just since I was very young so for me it's one of the things that's really strengthened my my relationship with God so yeah music for me is my core like in my go to in any situation I feel like I can just you know soothe myself and just like okay God's got me I know what I can't you know go astray knowing that music in got my back <laughs> yeah we to get we have to deal with what we know instead of over complicating things and it will not only affect the people that listen if you try and over complicate it won't only it won't only affect the people listening but it will also affect us you know personally individually because now we are diving into something that we really not familiar with you know so it's it's important to understand you know your basics fine you can accommodate um other ways and all of that you know because you know wh what's what's the point of not having fun in music you know and it's also important to explore you know because you, the more you explore the more you you pretty much unravel your true potential as a crew so um that's what we decide to that's why we decide to keep it a bit simple you know obviously there are some contemporary bits here and there but we had to keep it simple and by doing so um we 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 try by all means to accommodate um our audience we obviously have to think about where the music is going who is it going to you know we as i said 
every time we stand on stage, we tell a story based on our experiences. So um, we try by all means to, to literally tell people what we as a group are all about, what, what are we going through on our daily lives and all of that. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much. The group started back in 2015, uh, so it means we are nine years old this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yo, a lot has happened. When we started, we, Jonathan, I don't know if you know him, he was still around. Uh, so he, he was the one who was facilitating the, the practice and rehearsals because he's the founder of the group. And when we started, we were still in Chun Junior. And then when we, we realized that we are we're a bit older now, <laughs> we changed the name to Intunes at N. So, so the, how I've seen the group grown is Jonathan left, he got a job in Joburg. So we had to learn to stand on our own. Uh, so we are able to, to do rehearsals for ourselves. And we can even write our own songs. Uh, me individually, uh, how I've grown is you know, if you can listen to me back in 2015 and now, <laughs> there's a huge difference. Uh, it's big. And being in the group has helped me to, I'm one of the songwriters in the group. I've written songs. So that's how I've grown individually, musically and personally in terms of writing songs. Um, and when you write songs, you need to have that relationship with God because I believe all the songs that, that we sing, they are God given. So yeah. Uh, my earliest memory with music, with ancient it in, is I'd have to say 2022. Um, yes, we've been saying longer than that, but 2022 specifically because um, we got the opportunity to sing at the Youth Congress. And for us, that invite was a big invite. It, is, it was like nothing we've ever gotten before. So I think what made me so proud to be part of the group was how much effort we put into that whole thing. Like we literally pushed ourselves to limits we didn't know we could push ourselves to. Um, we sacrificed so much that we didn't know we were capable of sacrificing. Like we put so much of ourselves so that we can deliver something good for the Congress. And it ended up paying off because we did pretty well. Um, we impressed ourselves, we impressed other people. Like we showed growth, we showed maturity, we showed determination, we showed um, consistency and yeah that that really made me proud and like you know I'm part of something great um, I'm part of something that people really can relate to and are, are, are happy to relate to yeah we we faced so many challenges from being in Chun Junior to being in Chun ZN and obviously we fall um, along the way but we are able to bounce back um, it's not by our own, own power but because God I feel like God has something special in us and until that is fulfilled we'll always come back up stronger um, the love the unity in the group it's too much hey like they are my happy space my 
my rescue from everything else that is happening in the world, you know. Um, we love together, we are a family amongst every other thing and um, the ability for us to be able to stand up for each other. We, I'll fight for anyone in Inchun ZN. I'd fight because they are now like my brothers and my sisters. So the, the, the bond is so deep. I, I love that about us. Not so many people are able to, to chill on stage and also chill in life in general. But we have that and that is our power because that is why we are still standing even now. Whenever I get on stage, it makes me feel happy. Um, why? Firstly, it's because uh, I love music. So I live music. I speak music even when I walk. You just find me singing. Uh, it makes me happy because it gives me hope that Jesus is coming again. If I can change um, or touch someone's heart through my music. And, and then they get healed, yeah. I won't lie, we do get the attention. <laughs> I won't lie, we do get the attention, but how do we keep ourselves grounded uh, and, and not being prideful is, um, you know, for example, that we are, we, 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 it doesn't get to us. You know, we go everywhere, we are invited. It doesn't matter if it's a rural area, it's a Lokshini or around Durban or it's a small church where they, they meet at school, you know, we go anywhere. And even in, when it comes to, we don't charge <laughs> a lot of money. In most cases, we just charge transport money to get there. And, you know, we'd love to get more money, but, you know, because as a group, you know, we have so many things that we wanna, we wanna, we wanna achieve, that we wanna do. And even now, there's a lot of things that we are, we are, we are currently doing already that requires money. So it's, it's a bit difficult uh, at S SDA, a church, to, to, to make money. So we would love to charge extra, but you know, we understand the situation. We just, in most cases, we charge just the money for transport to get there, which I believe that shows that we are, we, we, we're still not proud as yet. <laughs> we're not going to be proud. <laughs> first things first, I'm not a proud person. <laughs> I'm not a proud person because I always believe that everything that I do is not for me to receive the glory, but for God to receive the glory. So when you have that mentality, obviously it's not going to be about me. You may say your amen, oh yes, thank you, you hear the lyrics of the song, it's touching you. But for me it's like, amen God. The person is literally hearing the message. So um, I don't have days where I feel like it's getting to my head. For me. Every time, even when I'm doing a presentation at church, when someone says, oh, no, Monty, you did good, I'm like, we thank God. That's how I was trained growing up. So for me, it's never about me. So pride, hell no, definitely not. Hey, I think we, 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 you know, even when you listen to other groups, man, you just realize, you know, hey, we still have a long way to go. And also realizing that this is not just secular music. This is gospel music. We're not doing this for ourselves. And I mean, I believe it's God who puts, who picked actually, who picked each and every one of us in the group to be there. Once we start doing our own things, we start to, you know, you know, God can remove you like this. So it's, I always tell the guys that we're not doing this for ourselves, but we're doing for God. We are just instruments that God has decided to use. So, yeah, we are, we, it re angels the message to preach the word, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's how we do it. With our music, it's more of a, we're inspired by the music we grew up listening to, um, like your heritage and you know the vibes, the STA music. We, we are highly inspired by it, but we don't stick to it. So everything we do is inspired by you know those things, but they'll have an intrinsic in flair, you know, an intrinsic in sound, an intrinsic in feeling. Um, I think for us, more than anything, our music has to touch people more than it has to sound a specific way. So yes, it is influenced, and you even when you l listen to some of our songs, you hear, with, ah, you know, this one, you know, but yeah, it's, it's highly influenced by it, but it does not sound exactly like it. Okay, first of all,
first things first, Kololami is an African song. It's in a sequel, it gives you that deep African feel. It's vibey. Um, and at the same time, it has a very powerful message. So the reason behind Kololami was to be able to reach out to the elderly, the youth and the kids. Because in, in oftentimes as group, we focus more on the adults and the youth. We do not cater for the kids. So when we, you, we go to sing for the kids, they get bored. But Kololam is a song that you can, it's a sing-along song. You can sing along with us, it's vibey, but also listen to the lyrics. Um, we are called to fulfill the Great Commission, right? And for that to happen, you need your hands, you need your mouth, you need your feet. So my feet walk with me, my hands help others, my mouth or my heart learn to forgive. That's basically what the song is saying. So in order for me to be able to fulfill the Great Commission, I need all the parts in my body to work with me. So that's what Kololami is about. And we need that faith in this world to make it to heaven. Without faith, then who are we believing on? At the Youth for 12 anniversary program, which was in the last year, I had possibly top three experiences when it comes to music. We had our MC and he was like, you know what, we're going to try something. And in the crowd, probably over 200 of us, and we had never practiced, a lot of us were strangers meeting together for the first time. But I truly felt like that day, I felt the spirit moving. I'm usually very skeptical when people say I felt the spirit moving, but I felt it that day. So Zeander is in the front and he basically says to us, we're going to sing holy, holy, holy. And so he starts and we all follow. And to get 200 essentially strangers to sing in harmony like that, that's when I really saw that when you do things to the glory of God, he will finish off. You basically just start and he will finish off the work because all of us knew our parts. We knew where we had to sing. I'm not a singer, but I knew where I needed to sing. I knew the notes that I needed to catch on. And then we finished singing, the song stopped. And then for probably five to 10 minutes, there was just silence. No one said a thing because I think it really tuned our minds to God. It tuned our minds to heaven. And I think a lot of us just thought to ourselves, is this what heaven will be like? And see, that is just one memory that someone has when it comes to music. There are plenty other stories about music out there.
music is a way I find healing. It has always been a way that I find healing. So being involved in a music group has has helped with that um, in many ways. I mean, as you are saying, Ubuti, sometimes, you know, reading a Bible text or listening to a sermon may not hit that spot. But for me, it's music. It will always hit that spot. So not only listening to it, but being involved in it, being involved in um, composing the music and putting the lyrics together, it just makes it so much more meaningful. Um, when you're favored with something, you don't deserve it. Um, I think the, 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 the definition of grace is unmerited favor. You know, God gave his grace um, to us whilst we were still sinners. So when we were favored, it doesn't mean that you're special. It means that even though you're unworthy, God still chooses um, to use you. And I don't think, you know, it can get more favored than that. You know, that being used by God, even though you're undeserving, even though you're a sinner, you know. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the meaning behind the name. You know, that we're special. <laughs> yeah. So just to add on, we actually, oh yeah, we actually prayed about a name because we were like, okay, what is the name going to be, you know, and we prayed to God and he answered us. And that's how the name came about, Favorite. We had our first practice session in one of the vestries. And it was after we finished um, going over the hymns, because we, we, we started off as just choristers in the church. So after going over our hymns, which we were going to sing for song service, then you know what, we were like, let's sing the song, let's try out the song. And that's how it happened. We sang a song. We harmonized and from then it started something. So I think those who would listen to us in like the very first days would know that we did a lot of covers. <laughs> we did a lot of a lot covers. Of covers. Um, and I think there was not an intention to actually start favored. I think we always say that uh, no one started favored. It was God who called us and it happened gradually. Um, and you know, slowly but surely we moved away from covers and um, some members as you will hear started to write songs but yeah that's how we started as choristering and yeah we evolved. <laughs> to everything that has happened ever since I can tell you that the way the structure is now more organized I can tell you that and um, I can tell you that where we are right now I wouldn't have said that we would be here at this moment it's actually quite interesting considering that um, Ungo, um she's she's been part of favored for a very long time and um, I'm fairly new to the group so when it comes to the first practice session um, for me it was more of there was beauty in what they were doing I actually did not plan on joining favored it was like <laughs> um, it was like, oh, can you help us with one or two songs? And, um, you know, one thing led to another. Little did I know that my guys knew had a <laughs> they had a plan. <laughs> they hijacked me. <laughs> yeah, so um, it, it is probably also, um, I would say, one of the few moments that we actually thought of putting something on tape or recording songs. Uh, it was just like an idea that we had. I was like, um, oh, guys, what if we think of maybe recording something or it could be an album, it could be singles, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. then, um, uh, you know, when it's, it, when it's the first time, 
people tend to panic a bit, but then eventually we're like, oh no, let, let's let's see how how it goes. And um, um, fortunately, we we thank God that He gave us the tools, He gave us the means, um, the talents, and everything that is in between, and um, we managed to, to to get the songs done. Yeah, being part of a, a team that is ministering, like you know, being part of God's work at the same time doing something that you enjoy. There is no better blessing than that. Um, you actually see that um, you, you grow in it. Instead of um, just being stagnant, you know, just singing in the church and all that, when you go up there, you actually see the importance of it. And it's, you're not doing it for yourself, you're doing it for God. And by so doing, you actually inspire others to do likewise. And I mean, the whole purpose is to spread the gospel, uh, teach the word, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the motive. I mean, we're not here to stay. We are, we are, we are on, the, on our way to heaven. And um, it's something that we need to bear in mind, that the goal is heaven. Mm. Think of it. When you get to heaven, God is going to sing for us. How beautiful is it going to be? We can only try and imagine and do something similar to that whilst we are still here. Yeah. When it comes to singing, I feel like it's completely different. I feel like I'm in a different zone. When it comes to speaking, sometimes um, I do experience the stutter, but like when I'm singing, it's like I'm in a different place altogether. I don't even think about it sometimes. Sometimes when I'm speaking, I think about it too much and I try to avoid stuttering and then sometimes it ends up happening because of how much I think about it. But maybe music, because I love it so much or because it's, it's just where I'm so comfortable at, I don't think about it and therefore it does not affect me one bit. So I feel like it's, it's a completely I, I can't explain it, but it's it's just completely different from when I'm conversing with someone. Yeah. Well, um, obviously, I get inspiration from the people that I look up to. Um, yeah, there's a few people. Um, there's Bendo, the Silvanyon, and there's Uspusiso, Mabasu. I look up to those people. So when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I need to try this. Yeah, well, so, um, so how it usually happens is that um, I listen to a song, right? Like, uh, uh, and then um, in my head, I'm already thinking of ideas, what to add, what to remove. And then when I get home, I just start on working on the song. You know? I try and hold myself, about six parts, seven parts. And then after that, I, I get guides from, from, from those parts, and then I send, then I find specific people that I think can, you know, fit in that specific arrangement, then I sent those guide, guide tracks for them to listen to, the, to their parts and then record while listening to their parts. So then when they're done, they send me their stuff, then I put it together, I mix and master, everything comes together. Okay, um, so w when you look at the Bible, you know, one thing that we have always learned, especially in the book of Psalms, is that we should sing praises to the Lord and give Him glory and honor with psalm, with, with ensembles, with hymns and everything that we can to give glory and honor to Him. And I think um, it's one of the ways that we minister as, um, as, as we, we reach out to souls, try to win souls for Christ. So, um, walking through how maybe I do when I'm writing songs, you find that um, there are moments where I can just get inspiration from a verse, it could be a, a thought, it could be experience, um, but I would say that for, for the most part it's through experience um, and you match that up with what you've studied, what you've learned about God. Um, sometimes um, I, I remember at some point I even took my phone, I had this melody in my mind. I, I just took it and I just sang a little 
line, a humming, a, a tone of some sort, then I, I couldn't figure out how to put that into perspective. Um, then I shared with my friends and uh, we started building melodies based on that. Then also, in some instances, um, I remember the other time also, I had, I had words and a melody. I, I, I normally write words down if I'm inspired by something. You know, the Bible says, for everything good and everything that is right, take time to ponder upon that. And um, I've seen that it, it has been the foundation of how I write songs, how I compose something. And I try to add melody to it through humming, through um, trying, listening also to other groups, what they are doing. You know, when you listen, you get inspired and you try to tailor it and do it in your own fashion. And that has been one walk that is actually quite interesting because it's unlimited, you know. The boundaries are limitless. There's always a filler when it comes to how you, you can compose a song. You find that with some songs that we already have, there's always something new <laughs> that you would want to add on to it. And you would wish, if only, we could get an extra part to do this little something. It would sound even nicer. So yeah, I guess that's, that's just about it. Mm. Well, a play that has existed since 2016, I joined in 2019, but we had been singing for a while, but we hadn't had something solid to say that you're not there was a group from Mbilo which uh, sang. So at that moment, I was like, this is actually the moment we've been waiting for. So I was filled with nothing but excitement. Um, I, I did think that it was going to be easy. <laughs> I thought the recording was going to be easy, but um, it turns out <laughs> recording isn't that easy. You know, it's, it's not that simple. Um, you have to do your warm ups, you have to do everything. Um, if you make a small error towards the end, you've got to restart. So I wasn't nervous, I was excited, and I was also a bit shocked, um, as in what goes into recording that kind of caught me off guard. But the whole experience overall, though, was, was quite lovely, especially when you get to hear uh, the end product. My beautiful Jesus, being the beautiful beloved being that you are that becomes one with the blasphemous bitter body that I inhabit and blesses me. Even as I neglect you every day, you, Al Shaddai, do not let go. You still educate with an eager and earnest desire for me to change so that I can excitedly ease back into the empowering book of your word. And when all my aversions I've avoided for too long return with an awesome strength, you, Adonai, always avenges and atones my absurd decisions and still adorns me with affirmations of your love. You, Father, are the unequivocal God that stands undefeated and under no circumstances would you leave us unguarded and unassured of your promises. Under your guidance do I stand with an unbridled praise for you and your unfaltering love. Today I declare that my trials and tribulations shall not triumph over me anymore, for the living God shall take and terminate my troubles and cause them to cease from terrorizing me. I know that my imperfections are seen as indescribably beautiful, for I was impressed with the likeness of your image. In you I can indulge in incomprehensible joy and find my happiest place that I can imagine. 
for the father of my life has forgiven me in every way and has foretold that he shall favor me further forever you are the only one who can unite me with you to undergo every unflattering moment lord your love leaves me living freely and lets your light shine through me life is not long enough to lavish in your love so i look forward to that day longing to linger in the light of your love so that's who you are to me my beautiful jesus because even after undergoing tribulations i felt unfathomably loved One day, I sat um, by the pool outside. I don't know why. I wasn't prompted by anybody to tell me to go outside. I just felt like I wanted to go sit outside. It was a sunny day like today, and it was slightly windy. I sat down, and the dogs came, and they sat with me, and we were sitting by the pool, and I just sat, and I experienced bliss. I, I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but, I sat and I listened to the wind and the water and the cars driving past and felt the warmth of the sun hitting my back and I was prompted to write something and I was inspired. I can't explain it any other way. And I've had a few episodes of that, you know, where the Holy Spirit just moves you and says, you know. But I think I was so, I was so um, amazed by the beauty of just the natural order of things. You know? Just amazed that the sun feels so comforting and that the water, the sound of water is so calming and the dogs just came and they didn't make any noise. They were just sitting with me. In that moment, everything was the way it was supposed to be. And I feel like that's just how Jesus feels. That's how it feels to be in the fullness and to, to, to sit with Him. And, you know, they say that there's that, you don't hear his voice verbally, like there's no, there's no, you don't hear his voice like how they, like, like uh, Paul did. But I felt the inspiration, the Holy Spirit came in and said, write something. And I went, I went upstairs and I wrote a song on that day. His warmth and comfort sustains his smiles and laughter on each face. So give him thanks for all the blessings and trials that build us up as we go to step into the presence of this awesome one. When my great-grandmother passed away, I was also prompted to write. So I'm taking you away from the, the beauty. I wrote a song, it was called, I called it, um, The Light of His Love. But now I'm taking you away from that into now a different scenario where I sat and I was upset, you know. Um, and for a while, a few, few days, I wanted to write something. I felt like it was, you know, it's coming to that time where um, there was nothing more that, that uh, we could hope for um, and you know we have to start you know, accepting things but out of, the, out of, out of like my own desire I wanted to write a song and I think in the beginning I was wanting to write a song for other people for other people to feel good you know but that's not why people write songs they write songs because of their experience and I started writing the song after everything, after the fact, late, late, late. It took me four days to write the song. And in that moment, I experienced Jesus because you sit at that piano and you are trying to figure out what works. You are trying so hard, like putting, putting words on a page together. But instead of, there's some things that God reveals to you in the Bible and it's just beautiful. But I'm sitting at the piano and it, it's just not coming together. I'm just sitting and writing and figuring out, I don't like that, and I don't like this, and it doesn't make sense, and whatever. But by the time I needed to come home, I had already finished writing that song. It took me four days to finish. And every minute that I, I had, I sat at that piano. And God revealed to me, in the time that I took and said, I can't 
I can't anymore. And he took over and he started writing for me. In those moments, the song was beautiful. And I experienced the song for the first time because I I'd, I'd said, you write for me, I will just be the, you know, you'll be my inspiration and I will write. My experience with Jesus is this. He comes when you not expecting him to come and he's there when you need him most and when it feels like he's not there he is you just and it can be disheartening when you don't get that like uh, that um, that chill you know sometimes you get that like chill down your spine that says oh yes this is right and sometimes you don't but C.S. Lewis also says that sometimes the Holy Spirit might be at its most powerful in that moment when you're not feeling him because he's working and in the moments where you feel that chill down your spine it's just a reminder that he is there so sitting outside in the sun or sitting in a position of stress or despair Jesus is there and he's beautiful both ways I think growing up uh, you know spending time with family gatherings and that you you, um, you get your, your music influence right so you start off with pop probably whatever you know um, uh, Mary had a little lamb whatever and then you get influenced and then you start picking what you like and I started picking R&B and then from that I was introduced to jazz music, Michael Bublé and that and then when I got to high school um, I was introduced to jazz in its, in its rawness and not just like um, jazz influence in, in like right, you know right there at the beginning blues and that and Gratefully, my music teacher at the time, uh, Natalie Rang, and she was a, she's a gospel singer, as well as a jazz uh, vocalist. So, you know, um, every, every time she would explain and stuff, it would, it would be a holistic, mo more holistic sense of music. So, I know that jazz isn't necessarily, um, I want to say, it is a quite, a, quite a controversial position to, to have, especially in the, in the gospel well, in the church that we belong to, but uh, she said something, and she says, why is it that when we sing gospel, we have a different hat that we put on, or a different mask that we put on to when we're singing the music that we actually like? And she said that you're the same person in both instances. Why not just bring in, you know, a sound or bring in a style into the music that you're singing? Because at the end of the day, you're the same person, and that's what will make you unique eventually, you know? With regards to my faith, there's a lot of music that we don't think is gospel, but it is. Like we categorize because of the genre that it is. They're like Mary Mary. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Come on, who doesn't love that song? And every single Kirk Franklin song. He is a, he is a gospel artist, but he's brought it into a way. And I actually love Kirk Franklin for this. Because the type of music he listens to actually bring people. Because it's the music that they listen to but in a gospel sense. Where there's a lot of young talent and young and people have different specialties with certain with like certain genres. Like Christian is good in jazz. I'm I'm learning. I'm not there yet. Um, and so he'll use what he's learned with the songs that and he'll choose songs that he knows will work for his specialties. And I feel like that's what music should be. So I felt like I've tried to bring in jazz sounding tones and music into my singing in church and that um, to try and just feel also a little bit more comfortable because I feel at times we limit ourselves uh, mm -hmm. because this music is accepted and this music isn't you know and I've tried to for my own sake um, break through that so that I can also feel comfortable when I'm uh, performing uh, because it's a ministry you know and being able to tell a story that you're familiar with will always be better than you trying to tell a story that you're not familiar with. Because with familiarity comes experience, you know. It doesn't really impact my relationship with God in a negative way also. I feel like it's helped me come closer because uh, I'm comfortable, you know. I'm not uh, forcing myself into uh, a box and saying this is all you can do and this is what you have and this is it. But I've actually tried to break out of that where I actually have more room to be myself within the church, you know, and within those circles. So, you know, that's the influence, that's the impact with, with God that my music has had on me. And 
yeah, that's, that's what it is. Music in general, I feel like with young people especially, it's one thing that we can all relate to because it's like it's always, it's always been there, it's always there. So that's like one of the common points I feel, especially with like, be, like when, we, when we believe different things, that can always be like the common link, you know, it's like with the Venn diagrams, the, th the thing in the middle. Yeah, that's, that's how music feels for me. I think music is a very important part of worship. I feel like, I don't want to say it is the most important because I feel like we could, we could fight about that the whole day, but I feel like music is very important because um, it's one of those things that are eternal, you know? Uh, there are some things that we do as a form of worship that, you know, is, is for us, but for us sinful beings, but they are the angels that are choir, they are choirs, masses of worlds that all sing praises to God. And I think that music, music, they say music touches a place that words can't reach. And we feel it, you feel it. You feel that when, 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 when a community or a group of people are in um, experiencing music together, like a concert, for example, when you're at a concert, there are thousands of people all singing the same song as you, all feeling the same way. And the beauty of music is that it can always be relatable. You just have to take a part of it with you. Like if I, um, some of the songs that I sing, I don't necessarily have the experience. You know, I have an experience like losing a child or you know, going through the crazy trials that Joe went through and whatever else. But there is some relatability in music. And um, I think it was Marvin Winans that said the gospel has the longest lasting impression left on the conscious. And it works through you. It works with you and through you and it changes you. Um, there's even a lot of people are studying music therapy. Uh, a lot of musicians are going that route because we have seen, um, you know, studies show that music does play a very important role in our growth and development and it can affect and influence you. So I think that if, if we place more importance on that specific section of worship, of church, of youth, it will bring in more people. It will also allow people to experience the message without hearing it uh, in, in, the, in the traditional pastor preachers, we do lesson study way. My friend is a new apostolic, he's, he's played trumpet in church with me before. And I've also, that's also been my little ministry, is bringing in people that play music, come play with me in church, you know. Um, so he plays trumpet in church and their church um, promotes playing an instrument. Uh, he plays piano and trumpet, his mother's an opera singer, his father sings in church, his, father's, uh, his brother's the choir leader. His cousin plays French horn and euphonium and all of, the, all of these instruments. They even have orchestras in the different provinces because the, the, that's just the nature of the church. And their worship, it feels different because not only is it young people that are engaging with it, but there are people that are taking a part of them that God has you know, inspired and playing it and saying this is the only way I can tell you the story of Jesus and playing it with the instruments and you as the audience are receiving that, you know, and it can bring you to Jesus. Gospel is outreach. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's about inspiring the love that is in you, the Jesus in me talking to the Jesus in you. Um, and music can get there, you know. Music, gospel music can make somebody cry where a sermon can't. Gospel music can make somebody feel the Holy Spirit where a sermon can't. Gospel music can, can inspire people to write, can inspire people to fall on their knees, can inspire people to spend more time with God, because it's a reminder that there's someone out there that wrote a song that appeals to you and is going through the same thing that you're going through. Sometimes it's hard to read the Bible because the stories are unrelatable. I mean, um, they are very relatable. I mean, when last did you see somebody hit a rock and water came out, you know? It's been so long. But gospel music is, 
is, is an eternal thing. It's forever. It says, you know, you're struggling, I'm struggling too. You know, you, you, you're having a good time, I'm having a good time too. You know, we rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you know. I don't know, that's, that's my take on it. I think music is extremely important. Listen, I'm no singer, and I'm only just now finding my voice. But 
I know when I sing with all my heart that God sings with me. I'm trying to appreciate music as God intended because I know music will follow me into heaven. Revelation 14 verse 3 mentions somewhere in the verse that no one could learn that new song except for that number that have been redeemed from the earth. I'm trying to be in that number. I'm trying to get to heaven and sing a new song with all those who have been saved, with God himself, with the angels. Down here, we have cried, we have prayed to God, asking him to, to, to save us from our troubles. We have prayed for peace. We have prayed for suffering to end. But one day, we will get to say the words of my favorite song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, and we will shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer.